So this weekend, we are turning this blank slate right here, this pile of wood chips, into a kitchen garden. Good morning, friends. I am standing in front of what is going to become our kitchen garden. Now, our garden is very close so our back door is right there and the garden is right there but I have been dreaming for quite some time actually more than a year about utilizing this space right back here for a kitchen garden and I want to use raised beds I want to use raised beds because they'll warm up quicker in the spring and they'll be really easy to harvest from so if I'm making a salad or something and I need to grab a couple things real quick I won't have to squat down or pick from the ground I can just go right outside the kitchen door grab some things easily from raised beds tall raised beds and call it a couple things actually came in the mail which have to do with our kitchen garden so let me show you what we got okay I just got really confused and thought that this was one of the arches that I got for the kitchen garden or the arch that I got but it's actually plastic tubes which seems odd but Deer have been destroying most of our fruit trees and I really wanted to protect the few that we have left so purchased these bad boys to wrap them around the trees, the young trees, so the deer can't scratch the bark with their, I think it's their heads that they use to rub against the trees and then they kill them. One other thing did come though and I know that it is the thing I'm thinking it is because it says it on the outside of the box. Let me show you what that is real quick. I'm really excited about it. I got a green stock. Another thing you might be wondering is why the heck did I get a green stock planter when I have a huge garden to plant in? And the answer is I am planning to have an indoor garden this winter. So I'm gonna be taking the green stock inside in addition to this new really high powered grow light that I got. And I am going to be having an indoor growing space. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm gonna be growing things like greens all winter long. I don't know, I might try some other fun things. The grow light that I got is high powered enough to be able to grow plants that produce fruit as opposed to just growing leafy greens, which is a common problem if you don't have the right grow light. So I'm really looking forward to that. So the green stock this season, I'm going to be picking up soil for it this weekend and I'm going to plant all kinds of leafy greens in it. And it's gonna be like my substitute kitchen garden before we actually get the kitchen garden in. I'm gonna have it right outside the back door on our little patio. And it's gonna be easy to go grab some herbs, some greens, and bring them inside for salads and things like that. I'm really excited about having another garden to plant all the yummy foods and beautiful flowers in. So behind me, we are gonna be putting in four raised beds. These beds are gonna be two feet tall and three feet wide and six feet long. My idea was to have two long beds and kind of an aisleway between them. So you'd walk between the two beds and harvest as you're going with two arches. So one arch on one side and one arch on the other. So you walk under some climbing roses and then you have your garden space on each side of you. But Chris made a good point that we might want some walking space. Instead of having two long beds, why don't we do four beds? So there's a little space between them so that you can walk around the beds a little more easily than having to walk all the way through and all the way around each time. Essentially, we'll have two beds and two beds with an arch here and an arch on the other side. I love using cattle panel arches in the annual garden, but I wanted to use like iron arches in this garden because I wanted to have more of a romantic feel, a little bit more um, sophisticated. And the cattle panel trellises are super functional, but they're not as aesthetically beautiful. Instead of using cattle panel arches, we're gonna be using iron arches that I found on Wayfair. These are kind of a gothic style arch and I already have the roses that I'm gonna be planting. I'll show you guys those in a minute. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Should I plant, so there are two different roses. One is the Tangerine Skies, which I picked up the other day. And one is a David Austin, like peachy, very light. It's like a very, very light peach, almost ivory 
English style climbing rows. Should I plant one on each side of the arch or should I plant them on separate arches and then find doubles of them? I've never really seen someone plant two different roses on one side of the same arch, but I kind of want to do it. I kind of think it would be fun to have like the wildness of different roses on each side. What do you guys think? Comment below and let me know. Uh, would you rather see have one arch with two different colors, roses climbing on it, or should I do the same rose on each side of a single arch? I, I don't know what I want to do yet. So I'm going to have the climbing roses on archways and then we're going to have the raised beds. So let me tell you about the plans for the raised beds. To construct the raised beds, we are going to be using cedar pickets. And that is because cedar pickets are way cheaper than cedar boards. So cedar is one of the best woods for building raised beds because it is naturally rot resistant. So you don't have to use any treated wood or anything like that. And it will hold up much longer than, you know, untreated pine. So we are gonna use fence pickets, which makes it, I think the whole project is for the pickets alone will be like less than $300. So not a huge investment. It's not cheap, of course, but if you were to get boards right now, you'd be looking at over a thousand dollars to build a kitchen garden from cedar boards. So I'm really looking forward to being able to do it on a budget. We're gonna use the fence pickets and then I think we're gonna use like two by fours um, at the corners and probably for some structure on the sides. My plan is to plant things like cherry tomatoes, salad greens, radishes, some annual flowers like zinnias and cosmos. And then I'll have the climbing roses on each side and I'm sure I'll have a bed that I dedicate to herbs for cooking since it's going to be a kitchen garden. But I also really want to dedicate some space to strawberries because I love the idea of having strawberries in a raised bed. But maybe we should do that somewhere else. Maybe we should have a raised strawberry bed in another area of our garden. Also curious what your thoughts are. Would love some suggestions. Should I put the strawberries in our kitchen garden or should I put strawberries in a raised bed somewhere else? So the kitchen garden is going to go right outside. This is actually our garage, but our kitchen's right here. So it's going to go right outside the kitchen. And one thing I want to do is improve the ambience of this area by hanging string lights over the kitchen garden and over a fire pit, which is going to go in that general area. So essentially you'll walk under string lights, which will go over the whole area. And you can move from the kitchen garden to the fire pit to the main garden, and then over to this patio where we have a new umbrella and this little seating area. Essentially, I want to turn our backyard into an oasis, a place that we can spend time, that we can hang out, that we love being present in. I am definitely inspired by people who live in urban or suburban environments where their yards are smaller and they can really use every inch of backyard space to create this like romantic, whimsical uh, hangout spot. So we want to do the same thing in our yard. We're also hoping to put in a stock tank pool. So if you have one of those, I'd love to hear about your experience with it. We want to do that maybe over, over in this area back here behind our patio. Around our patio, I'm putting in cottage style gardens. So we have a lot of different perennials like hostas and astilbe. I've been planting roses over the past couple of years, sedum and daylilies and azaleas. We have a weeping cherry and we have wild strawberries, columbine and peonies. Tons of really fun, beautiful flowers. And I just want to keep that going and add and add and add to it. Essentially the kitchen garden, which will be right in there. And then around the kitchen garden will be these cottage style gardens. And so you can see over there, we have some beautiful roses, hostas, columbine, peonies, irises. I have the service berry right there. And then I planted an elderberry tree right there. It has some milkweed around it. Adding to our fire pit area, we got one of the solo stoves, which are lower smoke output and um, they're really easy to use. We used it for the first time the other night and it was awesome. So we have that under that cover over there and we are hoping to get some Adirondack chairs to put around it and put in a little patio. Let me show you the two roses that I have and you can help me figure out what I want to do with them. These are the two roses. This is the Tangerine Skies. See it's got a really beautiful color to it. That's what it looks like when it's in full bloom. If you follow Jess in Roots and Refuge, it's the one that she has in her garden entrance. This one looks like that. So I really need help deciding if I'm gonna plant them both on the same arch or if I'm going to plant them on separate arches. Would love some suggestions on that. 
in the comments below or you can message me on Instagram, whatever you wanna do. Those are all my plans for the kitchen garden. Stay tuned for another video where I take you with me to the store and build the kitchen garden this weekend.